Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to configure SD1 on the 40 gate so that two different networks or two different VLANs can use two or prefer two different interfaces in our SD1 configuration. I'm still not home, as you can see. I'm still away from home. And those of you that follow me on Facebook or Instagram know exactly where I am. So if you are not, make sure you follow me on social media so we can connect and you can see the behind the scenes. It's also an easy way for you to connect with me. So if you like this video, I have a course on kbtrainings.com about the CCNA 200 301. That course bring you from zero to engineer. It teaches you everything you have to know on network security and so on to be able to take and pass the CCN exam, which is a very important certification that will help you start or boost your career in the tech industry. So the course is available on kbtrans.com. Go there and check it out. So here I have a switch and I have a 40 gate down here. And then I have uh, a checkpoint firewall. So the design that we're going to use looks like this. So I'm renting an Airbnb right now with some friends. So I have a home network which goes to the internet and the home network has 10.0.0.0 slash 24 subnet. So to the home network, I connected my D-Link switch and then I can share the connectivity between the checkpoint and the 40 gate. When one goes directly to the switch, so it's in the same network as the home network, which is 10.0.0.0. So one, two goes to the checkpoint. So there is some routing happening on the checkpoint here. And one, two is in 20.0.0.0 slash 24. So I have two uplinks going to the internet. And these two are going to be the members of our SD1 interface. And down here, I have my MacBook where I'm recording this video. And I created two VLANs on the 40 gate. The VLAN 2 with 2.0.0.0 slash 24 and the VLAN 3 with 3.0.0.0 slash 24. So right now, because my device is connected to the port number two, it is part of the VLAN 2. Later, when I want to test my configuration, I'm going to move it from the port number two to the port number three so that it's part of the VLAN number three or the network number three. And we're going to see the result. And here I have some pings going to Google. As you can see right now, it's failing. And here I have some trace route that we're going to execute later on. And these are the things that we're going to do today. So I just showed you the current configuration and the current goal. Actually, the goal is to make sure that the VLAN 2 prefers WEN1. So if WEN1 and WEN2 are active on the SD1, VLAN 2 will go with WEN1 first and VLAN 3 will go with WEN2 first. And of course, if the VLAN 2 doesn't have WEN1 available, if WEN1 is down, the VLAN 2 is going to switch to WEN2. And if the VLAN 3 um, doesn't detect WEN2 or if WEN2 is down, the VLAN 3 is going to use WEN1. So I showed you the design and what we're going to do today. Now we're going to go in the 40 gate and start our configuration. I'm going first to create an SD1 interface. So to create an SD1 interface, we need to go under network, SD1, and click on new. I'm going to create a new zone and I will name it SD1 zone and click OK, or I can name it interface, it doesn't matter. So I need to add new members to that SD1 zone. I will do SD1 member or new SD1 member. And the first, the first one is WEN1. I'm going to add it to SD1 zone and I'm going to add the second member. It's going to be WEN2 and I will add it to SD1 zone and select OK. So now I have our two members inside here. But let me show you actually what it looks like uh, in terms of network interfaces. So I showed you that I have the VLAN2 which is linked to the port number 2 and it has the subnet of 2.0.0.1. I mean we have the VLAN 3 with 3.0.0.1. If we look at our laptop, so we have 2.0.0.2. We are in the VLAN 2 right now. And that's where we are trying to go to the internet, but we we still cannot because we, we don't have all the configurations ready. So we just added members to the SD1. Now we're going to add rules. And the rules are the most important things because from the rules, VLAN 1 will know how to treat those interfaces and the incoming interf I mean the incoming traffic. If I go under SD1 and select SD1 rules, there is one rule at the end here. This is implicit. So we need to add two new rules. The first one we're going to name it VLAN 2 prefer when 1. So here we're going to say if the traffic is coming from the VLAN 2 addresses, 
um, the users we don't really have to define and going to the internet so all we are manually going to say that this traffic will prefer the NFS when one and then we will just select OK. So this is the first SD1 rule. We are saying that VLAN number two prefers when one. I'm going to add another rule or I can just come here and duplicate the rule. I think I can. Yeah, I come here and clone the rule and name it VLAN three prefer one two. All right. So from here, I can say it's enabled and click on OK. So I'm coming here to modify it. I'll have to I'll have to change the source address to VLAN three addresses, remove VLAN two and select OK. So we have this rule for the VLAN. No, 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 no. I need to change the member. I mean, the the interface to one, two, so that we know that this VLAN prefers one, two. All right. So we're good here. And the next thing we need to do is to add an IPv4 policy for VLAN two and VLAN three. So I need to go under policy and objects and then create new um, VLAN to, to internet. Incoming interface is VLAN 2. Outgoing interface is SD1 zone. The source interface, I mean source address, we have addresses in the VLAN 2. Destination is everything on the internet. Services, all the services. And that's all we need and I will select OK. So I can take this and copy it and also past above or below it doesn't matter. So I will come in the new policy and name it name it VLAN 3 to Internet. All right, so the incoming interface is VLAN 3 outgoing is SD1 zone. The addresses, I'm going to take VLAN 3 addresses and everything stays the same and I will click on OK. We still are not able to ping because there is one more step that we need to do here is add a static route. So we go under network and select static route and here we're going to add a new route. It's a default route so it goes to 0000, 000 and here we need, we need to select the outgoing interface which is the SD1 zone and then OK. With this, we should be able to ping now. Let's give it a moment. All right, so now we have the pings going out to the internet. And remember, we are in the VLAN number two. Let's see what port we are using right now. That's where we're going to use the trace route. Let's do a trace route to the internet, I mean to Google and see. So as you can see here, it's going to 2.0.0.1 and then goes to WEN1. This is WEN1, 10.0.0.1. This is a good thing because we know that the VLAN2 is using WEN1. So let's come here and apply the cable to WEN1 and see the behavior. We're going to lose some pings, of course, but we're going to be back. Okay, we just lost the ping and now we are back on WEN2, which means that the computer or the VLAN2 is preferring when one first. Let's do some trust route. You can see that when we are leaving the device, we are going to one two and then to the internet. That's good. That's expected. So let's switch our device from. I'm going to return the cable on the on when one. So let's switch our device from the VLAN two to the VLAN three. Uh, let's see what happens. It should grab a new IP from the VLAN 3. Let's go under connected. Yep, I have an, um, an IP from the VLAN 3. And why don't we have some pings here? Are my policies OK? I don't know. So here I have access to the FortiGate with uh, the VLAN 3. Let's go and check the policies. VLAN 3, SD1, VLAN 3 addresses. Oh, the policy was not enabled, that's why. So if I enable the policy, come here. Yep, we are connected to the internet. So every time you make a copy of a policy, make sure you enable the policy because it's not enabled by default. 
So now we can ping from the VLAN 3. Let's go a trace route and see what WAN connection we are using. So as you can see, VLAN 3 is using WAN 2 first. That's the SD1 rule. We are using WAN 2 first. And I am going to unplug the WAN 2 cable. Let's go back to our pings here. I'm going to unplug the WAN 2 cable. And as you can see, we lost the ping. And now we are back online. And if I come here and do another trust route, you can see that we are using WAN 1. All right, guys, this is what I wanted to demonstrate. This is a question I received on YouTube. I'm glad to respond to the question. I like those questions. If you have any question, leave it in a comment. I'll be glad to take my time to answer your questions. All right, guys, if you like the video, don't forget to like it on YouTube and share it with your friend. Also subscribe to the channel if you like some technical projects like this one here. And make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you are studying for the Cisco CCNA 200 301, I have a course available on kbtrains.com to teach you all of this to make you go from zero to engineer to help you start or boost your career in the tech industry thank you guys and i'll see you in the next video take care and bye